We're all joining us right now to talk about what clients want from the generator, uh, generative AI is uh, Clara, she is a CEO of Salesforce's uh, uh, service cl uh, cl uh, cloud, I should say. She's also, of course, a Starbucks board member. It's nice to see you. It's been a long time. Uh, Great Clara, to see you, too. Wh what, do you think this is, what do you think the future of this really is in terms of what the actual products will look like? Well, you know, ChatGPT has become the talk of the town, and our clients are seeing the value of using generative AI from sales to marketing to service to IT. And so I think that's why the, the, we've seen a tremendous response to our announcement of, of Einstein GPT this week. As for the future, I mean, it's really about, you know, bringing enterprise grade generative AI to our clients, whether those are small businesses or the largest companies in the world, and doing it in a way that's rooted in business outcomes. Uh, we're not talking about writing funny poems. We're talking about writing sales emails and customer service responses that agents can send to get back to customers faster and doing it in a way that is trusted and secure with our customers' data. Right. How long is your contract with ChatGPT? I ask because there's been a big question as to whether they become a sort of monopoly player in terms of the AI models that support so many other businesses or whether we think that Google and others will emerge and offer competitive products that create a sort of sort of multiple AIs that are out there that, that, that then sort of power so many different services? Einstein GPT is a combination of our proprietary AI from Salesforce and an open ecosystem of vetted generative AI partners. We announced OpenAI as one of our initial launch partners this week, but we also announced a $250 million generative AI fund from Salesforce Ventures investing in other generative AI startups like Cohere and Anthropic. And so we're really taking an ecosystem approach and when it comes to AI, we've actually been on this journey for over seven years. We introduced Einstein AI in its original form to the market in 2016, and we've just seen exponential adoption and growth, now delivering over 200 billion AI predictions every day. Right. How much of the, uh, you know, when a client uses a service like this and asks, a, asks it to write a letter or a question, and, and by the way, provides details to the service in the course of the prompt, if you will. How much of that data then goes back to ChatGPT? That is exactly the reason why companies don't want their employees using consumer chatbots for work. It's making sure that their proprietary data doesn't get out there into the open for public use. And I think that's why so many customers have come to us and why there's been so much excitement around Einstein GPT, because they know they've been trusting Salesforce for 24 years to keep their data protected and secure. But I, I think that part of the question becomes not just how much uh, does the, on the consumer grade version does it go back to chat GPT. In terms of your own ability to train um, the service, how much of that data gets therefore shared, if you will, between clients. Not that the clients are sharing the information with each other, but sharing it with you effectively. We keep our customers' data separate. We always have for the last 24 years. It's part of our multi-tenant model. And so we're bringing that to bear in the AI space, just like we have for the last seven years. So it's a critical part of making sure that this is a trusted environment for using generative AI.